Mine's recording. Mine's recording too. Okay, it's for some reason it won't record mine tonight. Okay, well, rough start. Uh, welcome to Third Thursday for August, everybody. And uh, we usually talk a little bit about what Third Thursday is. So what exactly is Third Thursday? I'm glad you asked. It is a prompt that we give every month uh, here at SVS, which stands for the Society of Visual Storytelling. And uh, anyone can enter for free. We have one winner. And uh, then we give an unspecified number of honorable mentions. And uh, we get to pick whatever we want to critique. Um, and so we basically meet like we are right now and go to meeting. It's free for anybody to join in. Um, if you're watching us on YouTube right now, uh, we do it every third Thursday of the month um, at 9 o'clock Mountain Standard Time, 11 o'clock Eastern Time, and 8 o'clock if you're on the west coast of the U.S. And I'm not even going to try to attempt to give the times around the world, but uh, we have people joining us from all around the world. Um, why do we do this? Lee? Lee? We do this to give you real-world <laughs> experience with uh, difficult jobs. Um, doing your own work on your own time is fun and easy, and we want it to be the illustration to be fun and easy, but when we give you a specific assignment, it changes the, uh, the whole dynamic. So. Yep, that's right. So um, then we post the video to YouTube right after, so if you miss it, you can always check it out on YouTube. Um, and I guess we'll give the uh, the next prompt at the end. But Lee, why don't you talk about how we're going to critique this time? Because we've been switching up the format a little bit. Yes, yes, we have. We're gonna do. We're gonna continue with what we did last month. Um, this time, typically we've been doing drawovers of just a couple of pieces, um, and that works pretty well. But we decided that we want to give more exposure to all the artists that submitted work. Um, so we're gonna do that one more time. Um, we're gonna go through everybody's entry and talk a little bit about what we would change and why we would change it and uh, hopefully get specific enough where you guys know where to go um, from what you submitted. And we're gonna pick a winner from that grouping as well. Um, so yeah, it's just a way for everybody to get, uh, to get feedback and to show kind of a general range because Will and I were talking earlier that a lot of times multiple submissions fall under the same category of change or, 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 or of critique. And, uh, and so we can talk about that a little bit as well. And then we talked about maybe kind of in the future grouping those uh, critiques together, like all oh, these need value help and all of these need drawing help and, and just, just different ways of critiquing the same, the same work. But we like, we like everybody getting a chance to uh, have their work seen. Yeah. Okay. So I am going to turn it over to you there, Lee. Turn it over to me. And, uh, let you go through some of these. This was a great prompt. I thought, um, yeah. really good. So really the, prompt, great. the prompt for this month, I'm sure everybody uh, who submitted a piece knows what it was, but the prompt this month was uh, character design from the Wizard of Oz. And um, so it was just straight character design, not necessarily uh, illustration. And it was character design for, for illustration, meaning it didn't have to be for concept design for a film or something like that. Uh, so it could fit a, a number of roles. And I want to talk about that um, before we get into showing all of the, uh, the, the work, if you if you guys don't mind. A little mini mini lesson if you, if you don't mind. So the things that, at least in my opinion, and Will and Jake, feel free to, to jump in any anytime. There's four main areas of critique in terms of a character design that I'd like to go over. And these are just kind of what I run through, so I'd love to get you guys feedback as well. Um, so in order of importance, in, in my opinion, here's what I'm looking for in all of your entries. Um, and I'm gonna show you examples, by the way, of, of all these too. Uh, so first off is going to be the concept. Is it clear and is it cohesive? Do we know immediately what world these characters live in and do all the characters go together? Um, that's a big one for this one since it is Wizard of Oz, but you're supposed to, one of the uh, rules of this, this assignment is you're supposed to change, um, change something about it. You can't just redesign them for the same world that the film already has or even the, even the book. We want a little bit more um, specificity there and a little bit more uh, creativity. So does your concept ring true? That's step one. Step two, there's, there's a couple of different layers with it. Let me go through this. A silhouette is the next one. And that's basically shape design. So how strong are your shapes? Um, and I put these slider bars here 
because these next three categories kind of, I mean, if you picture like a little, little bar here that can kind of slide, you can go anywhere from just realistic all the way to stylized, but your overall silhouette and your shapes that go together need to be very, very solid and very well designed, especially since you don't have a big background to add interest and you don't have a, a lot of scenery. Um, so, so your shape designs and how those shapes go together, uh, very, very, very important. And we'll talk about that quite a bit. The next one is once you have the, just the overall shape of the character design, um, the next thing they'll look for is gesture. Does the gesture show any kind of personality? That's how you can uh, um, add meaning to your character. It's always funny if you've worked in uh, um, games or animation or if you've taken even concept art classes, how funny it is when you do a really cool concept and then you give it to the modeler and they do the, mod they do the model in a T-pose, which is basically straightforward with the arms straight out, and it just kills the character. It's always really tough to see your character kind of in that pose um, because it takes a lot of the life out of them. So how much, uh, how much personality can you give through just how they're standing, how the weight's distributed and all of that. Um, and the next one, oh, sorry. So you can have dynamic gesture and that's with a lot of gesture. Sometimes though, depending on your style, you may want to pull that back um, and, and calm it down. So it is going to be dependent on the style. The next thing is your illustration style. And what I mean by illustration style is the mark making. Um, are you being really expressive with the marks? Is it real loose? Since this is for illustration, as well as you know, game art and all that other stuff, you can be almost a little bit more abstract. Think of terms of like, I don't know, maybe like Van Gogh as being very expressive, like those marks, those just really, really aggressive kind of marks. That, that even works for, for this assignment, if you wanted to go that, that rough. Or on the opposite side of that spectrum, you can be very realistic. So I like when I'm in doing my classes, I love to have these as little, um, as almost like little slider bars. Can't get on there. There we go. And you can pick where you want to be. And I like my students to, to, to pick where they want to be. And then I can judge the work against that. If they said they want a, a stylized or leaning towards stylization character um, that's a little bit kind of quieter in their gesture so they're not super animated and, uh, and they are adding a little bit of expressive strokes, then I want uh, their work to show that. And if they can show me this overall um, breakdown, then we can start talking about it in, in terms of a meaningful critique. Um, Will, Jake, you got anything you want to add to this before I show some samples? I, you know, I was thinking that's a great concept, and the I would add a bunch more sliders, and almost like a checklist. Sure. Um, you hit the main ones, but then there'd be maybe some subsets, like I noticed looking at the illustrations tonight, um, we've got some people that are, the, 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 the scale between kind of fuzzy, blurry, smooth work and then really detailed with lots of lots of um, just lots of details lots of um, really crisp marks so you get fuzzy to crisp right right and and I think some people are way too far to the fuzzy side and maybe some people are putting too many crisp details where they where they don't belong either you know so totally agree um, lots of things to to look at and to evaluate your evaluate yourself against when you look at professional work. Right, right. Exactly. Great. It's a really great point. But I do want you guys to keep this in your in this kind of graph in your in your mind as we're going through some of this stuff because it makes it easy to talk about. Um, let me pull up the characters that I grabbed. And I just I grabbed just a smattering of designs from different illustrators. All these are pro. Um, and but you're gonna I'm gonna run through the gamut in terms of uh, style and technique and all that. And I'm just gonna go through them real quick real quick. Um, so this would definitely be, you know, more towards that heavily stylized, very illustratory, um, and then almost leaning towards animation style. Um, but, you know, really, really great shapes. And I like to contrast that, you know, some people when I say, hold on, let me go back. Of course it won't work. There we go. Um, going through like a dynamic kind of gesture, even though the guy's not like wacky and his arms aren't going anywhere, he's got a real big shape to him and going straight down to that other one, which now isn't showing up. I'll get I'll get back to it. But the other one that I just showed, the Red Riding Hood, very still and very quiet in terms of the gesture, and that works for that character. Um, I like showing this one because it shows a lot of the process. If you guys didn't run through a million of these, um, you left something on the table, in my opinion, because this is the way, whether it's for games or whether it's for animation or whether it's for books, 
um, using your silhouettes and your shapes is the easiest way to just bang out a lot of designs. And almost everybody I know works that way. Um, this guy's very stylized in his shapes, but the painting style is fairly realistic with the lighting and the shadow and all that stuff. Really cool shape design. I mean, I, I tend to lean towards- Those are, those are Dennis Zilbers. Are they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I love this one on the left. But I love it. And if, if you're doing a character, and, and as you were for this assignment, and you're not given any background information, and you can't submit another illustration, I would lean towards really, really pushing your shapes because you have nothing else to show. So you got to separate yourself from everybody else. This is uh, Nicholas Marley. Awesome, awesome um, character designer for DreamWorks. He did all the um, uh, How to Train Your Dragon stuff and all that stuff. Um, Mary Grand Prix, this leans, sorry it's so pixelated. Um, this is an interior for the book. Uh, and mm -hmm. she leans towards like a kind of a realistic, almost realistic kind of character design, but then her mark making's real expressive. And so that's where she would be, you know, over here, down here in illustration style, uh, you know, very ethereal with the charcoal but her character design isn't that stretched. It is stylized somewhat though. And contrast that with this really, really stylized uh, uh, character designs from The Corpse Bride. Love these shapes though. I mean, you almost can't go too far when you're doing some of this stuff. And I, I recommend, even when somebody's doing realistic work, to try some of these out and then pull back and go back to the realistic stuff and try to just get some of the feel from this, even if it's not gonna be this crazy. And I can show you an example of that. This is a great page from the Aladdin stuff. I think we talked about this uh, at the end of last <coughs> Thursday, but just getting your just basic overall shape structures down and making sure your characters are different and each one's recognizable just by shape only. Really cool designs. I don't know what it's for, but I, I love them. This is the same artist um, really pulling back on their design. This is pushing the, the shapes out real far. And this is coming back towards kind of a stylized realism. This is where the, they're, uh, it's a, almost a realistic type character, but beautifully designed shapes. And then the gesture is just is pretty still. It doesn't, it's not a big action pose. Um, tends to work okay. I'd probably like to see this character a little more exaggerated considering how, how awesome he is. Um, I wanted to show this just because it's a great way to work. Same way as going from those silhouettes to this would be kind of step two and just designing a bunch of different shapes for, for a character design. I put this one in here for a kind of a balance. I think this is a totally fine character design, but I feel like it's totally bland in comparison to all the other ones that I'm gonna show you guys. Now it works, it's, it's, it's drawn just fine. I got no problem with it. But I think if you're gonna do a design like this, maybe this would have worked for Dorothy, but if somebody just turned this in compared to you know all this other stuff, no way I'm stopping on that person's portfolio when I've got all these other cool designs to choose from. So I like to put that in there just as kind of a, you got to push it. You always got to push it and try to get, you know, you got two seconds to get noticed and, and you have to do it in that two seconds. It's a great way of working up just clean designs, black and white, just dealing with that straight um, overall graphic design. This is awesome. I don't know who it is. Oh, it's, it's uh, Darken, very well-known uh, concept artist. Just awesome rendering, great shape design, great lighting, great mark making. This is what happens when I think when all this stuff comes together, just beautiful. Just, I think this guy's name is Chris Deboda, something like that. Very much more stylized kind of animated or illustrative style. Um, this one's super uh, small and that's why it's so pixelated. I grabbed it, but when I saw it in my browser, it was about this big and I still, you know, it's immediate on what those shapes are and you know, which ones you're responding to. So that's why I picked that one. Same guy, Chris Deboda. And this is more of the illustrated style. So some of those had a little bit leaning towards games and, and, and realistic kind of movies. Uh, and this would be more towards the illustrated book kind of style. And I love this stuff. This is Illumina. I like this artist. She's awesome. She wins all the millions of awards. I and mean, she's international. She's just great. Um, Isabella Arsenal. She's got a ton of children's books. And um, I, I just love her shapes and, and her rendering style. All of it, again, this is where all this stuff comes together. Again, just totally different style, though, than... Uh, you know, where's then, uh, then dark <laughs> equally successful though. Oh wait, there's that one that I was talking about. It's fairly realistic proportions. He's elongated a little bit, but look how strong these shapes are still in terms of the, uh, the design and the, the overall build. All right. I need to hurry cause I need to get through with this. This is a uh, thank you. <laughs> Chris Debota. Oh. Do you have a nice. question though? 
I was going to ask if that was Feng Zhu. Chris, uh, Chris Applehans. I love this. I mean, this wasn't probably not enough for us to see the overall characters, but man, what an awesome drawing. Yeah, that's good. And then comparing it with this, which I, I absolutely love this too. So it almost doesn't matter where you go, whether you're going to go really stylized, really graphic, really realistic. The same principles apply in all of it. And you can kind of see how all of them hold together. This is gorgeous work, in my opinion. I just love it. So that Edward Gorey style, I posted this on the forum because I love it so much. Much more realistic style, but then still definitely has a feeling to it. It's very sharp, very uh, angular. Um, proportions aren't too stylized like this one. This is from Quartz Bride. Again, very, very stylized shapes. And then this is very flat and, and more, much more illustrated again. Here's that one that I started with. So not much gesture here, but still has a great feel for that character. I'd want more if the other characters were in, in this setting. Um, anyway, hope that orients everybody to kind of what we're looking for and where we're going. <coughs> Let's go ahead and uh, do we have some people that need muting, Will? Or oh, perhaps. Need? Let's see. Waiting for name need to be muted, and then Sorry, someone else. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to name names because it's not their fault. It's go to meeting. The, oh, that, I know. Uh, I'm not saying you should. When they come in late. <laughs> It's gotta be. It's gotta be go to meetings way of like chastising people. You know, like when you walk into a class late right. and you try to be really quiet. <laughs> you know? That's the only thing I can figure. Like other than you know, like because people use this for business, and maybe it's good to like, I don't know, just so you know, someone's in the meeting. Well, because it shows it shows next to their name, it's green, and so like if you're the boss, you can constantly scan that list. Who's coming late? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Which is what Will does. Will's the boss. <laughs> <laughs> um, so do you guys have anything you want to add to that that grouping or anything to say about that? Does that kind of accurately represent, it, represent enough? Yeah, I would say um, concept uh, probably can outweigh poor design. Like if the idea is really good, we can mm -hmm. give a pass to some design flaws. Agreed. But if the design is amazing and it's just a dumb idea, it's just it, it doesn't it doesn't ignite you know excitement for it. So it's why Beavis and Butthead did so well. It's why the Oatmeal exactly. does so well, and yeah. a bunch of books that I'm not going to name. Um, but you're polite. They're, they're, but we've talked about it. They do follow design principles. They just um, are able to really go super primitive or. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. It's a weird thing. If you go that real primitive style, you're right on the line of whether it's going to work or not. It's tough to pull it off. Right. So that that's why, like, there's times, you know, I have this thing where I want to post a drawing every day online or every other day. And there's times where I have to edit myself and I'm like, this concept isn't good enough. I'm not going to post it. And even though the drawing's fine, it's a good drawing, um, but I, I put a lot of weight on on concept and I think that's that's key editors art directors anybody you're going to be working with are going to look at that concept first so I, a, I'm glad you put that as number one it's a good point that Jake's bringing up by the way that that when you're working with an art director especially at a big publisher publishing house they are so used to seeing really good drawings that they almost just expect you to draw and design well they sometimes they only see the concept like they're not in other words they're not wowed by the uh, design stuff as much as we are, mm -hmm. um, at least in, in, in my experience. I mean, they go straight to the concept and say, hey, this looks cool, but it's not working, so you got to change it. And so yeah. just a, something to throw out there. Let's get into the, uh, the nitty gritty. This is, um, this is Beverly, uh, Beverly Holtzum's work. Uh, anybody want to take a stab or you want me to go first? Go for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so the, for the first thing that I see um, is, is – I, I like the color variation and there's some stylistic choices that just seeing it again, making it really small. Some of the shapes look really good. Once I blow it up though, I've got concerns because a, we're starting to deal with, with uh, uh, copyrighted characters already. And so it starts to lean towards fan art to me, which is okay. I mean, we've all done fan art and it's, it has a place for an assignment like this though. I feel like it's, it's, um, it's a top card. It's a, it's an easy solution because you're getting the cool factor that already goes with the characters that we already know. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so there's a lot yeah, but, of work. But there's, but I'm going to defend, okay? Uh, sure. I'm going to give the other side of that. Is uh, maybe, you know, I mean, when we gave the assignment, it's not, we didn't drill down and go so specific that we said exactly what the application would be. So right. you know, maybe she maybe she might think that this would would uh, be, attract people at a convention or something like that. So maybe the intent is for for children's publishing, absolutely. Right. That's a, that's a great point. That's a great point. I mean, and if you had a whole series of properties where you're taking other characters and putting them in, you know, kind of cross referencing fairy tales with popular culture characters and stuff, and there's a whole series. Yeah, uh, you make a totally valid point, but I just say, I just say, wa watch out for a, <laughs> watch out for it being a crutch. Um, the other thing is gesture, like a lot of these, like Dorothy uh, is kind of tipping over. She needs to, she doesn't look balanced as much as she could be. So I would, I would tell this artist to work on their gesture. I love some of the shapes. Um, the Tin Man is, in my opinion, the most successful one. Although I like the shapes of Dorothy too. I think the problem for me with this one is they're rendered with, you know, light and shadow and round shapes, you know, rounding the renderings like uh, amplifying the the dimensions of the shapes, but the drawings themselves feel very flat, and so it's it's sort of grinding against each other and not really being a um, not being like it's not in harmony. The the mark know? the mark making definitely feels like it's not. Um, a definite choice kind of we're getting into that mm -hmm. last section that I was talking about here is the illustration style and how you're mark making how you're laying down your values so that is that is definitely something that I would um, have Beverly work on a little bit too right okay cool all right let's move down this one's Brittany Harris Will what do you think I really love these um, I thought the shapes were really nice um, and the 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 basically my my probably my biggest critique on these is they to me they fall in the realm of a little bit on the fuzzy side and not enough what's that too soft yeah too soft um, and then you know um, a few things um, like the hair on Dorothy to me um, it feels like it's hanging up but not it just doesn't feel um, uh, like the 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 style is quite working mechanically, so I would really look for for better reference on that to to make sense of the why the hair is held up like that. Um, little little things like that, but overall the shapes I thought were really fun. Um, nice color variation, and again that would be my biggest thing is to go back in. It looks like like if I were working on this, I would go back in. Um, with a with a really fine uh, digital brush and start to add in little little details where they would be logical, you know. Yeah, I agree. The, this is about eighty five percent done, in my opinion. I think it take mm -hmm. take like another like one hour per character is what I would spend. Just like and allot yourself that time. Like just slow down, like Will said, especially in the face and the hair. You can let the other stuff, like the shoes, kind of fall off a little bit. Tighten that stuff up. The gesture on these two characters, the middle two characters, is much stronger than the outer two. In other words, their personalities isn't, aren't really showing through that much. Um, so you may want to mm -hmm. think about think about that. Yeah. One big aspect of that is the tilt of the head. Um, the tilt of the head almost always will counter the body. And if you lean to the right, your head almost always counters that and bobs to the left. And, uh, and it's a great way to add gesture. Look at how Dorothy's doing that. So her head's kind of tilting up, and she's got that, that flare. Head's going the opposite way of the body. So it's a beautiful gesture. The other characters, their head's straight up, so it kind of stagnates that. One quick, I was going to say, a quick fix. If you're good at line work, a quick fix for something like this to really punch this design is to just give them a nice, crisp outline. Uh, and go in and just, you know, draw the nose, draw the face, draw an out outline around it, along with that dimension, and you can, you can make a really cool striking image from that. I did that the other day with, um, with the piece. Uh, I won't go into it, but but it was just fuzzy and not quite flowing. So I went in and just did crisp line work on it, and it it brought it all together. 
Yeah, one of the masters of that, by the way, even though that's showing up a little bit pixelated, Arthur Rackham. If you guys don't know him, you need to know him because he's awesome. Uh, 19, uh, probably 20s and 30s type illustrator. Uh, but he kind of ba goes back and forth between rendering and tone and line. Um, mm -hmm. And and he's amazing at it. And so it like like Jake was saying, he can add just that little bit of line there and it, co it totally just crispens it up. Um, just like Jake's saying. So he's somebody to look at, Jake, obviously, as well, to look at. Hey, one more thing on this one. And I want anybody else who's listening uh, to keep this in mind. The presentation on this one is awesome. And the, the, way, the reason I say that is there's good spacing between the characters. And when I start a children's book, I want to get my characters approved so that I don't have to, um, I don't want to draw all these characters in the book and then have them go, you know, we don't we don't even like that character. So I want to I want my editor and my art director to go. Uh, I want them to have a problem at this stage, so I can change it. And then once I start working on the book, I start working on it. But I would say this is this is the way you should be looking to to uh, to send something, uh, a, you know, a character um, sketches to your your client. And what you'll see in some of the other ones is you got different perspectives, so they don't really feel like they fit as a family together. Um, and uh, but that's what I would would go for is that everyone here feels like they're standing in a line. I don't know. How do you feel about that, Jake? Is that what you go for? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, this is this would be a great portfolio piece. It'd go yeah. go great in a portfolio. It'd go great for a presentation. Um, you could you could. I the you, the best point you bring up there is that they're all on the same plane and we're all looking at them from about like mid eye level. Mm -hmm. So yeah, when you want to do put characters together, just be consistent with that POV um, that you're that you're working on. So we might not mention as we're critiquing these pieces. You know, we're we're not going to be able to give a crit a complete critique. So just know that if you didn't do that, if we were giving you a cr complete critique, that would be one of the things we might um, mention. Is yeah. keep that the same that consistency. And one thing too, by the way, if you are including a page like this in your portfolio, is you can use all the sketches and all that stuff. As a, as a great supplementary page too, like on the page preceding this one in your portfolio, especially if you're leaning towards visual development, um, show all your sketches and then have the payoff be this color, you know, painting. It's beautiful. Um, one last word to Brittany before we move on, and I know we're spending a little bit too much time on these front end ones, so we'll, we'll start going a little bit faster. Um, every All these characters' faces and stuff and, and, and details is drawn fairly accurately except for the, the witch's whole lower half of her face slides to the side. In other words, there's so much space over here that it doesn't match the, the rest of the design. So just follow your center line down, unless, you, unless somehow you're going to hold her, the witch's mouth over to the side in other drawings. Um, it looks like a mistake to me, and so that's the only one that does that, and so I just thought I'd point that out. Cool. Uh, all right, let's move forward. Nice job. Yep. This is Washu. This is a, a, an anime world um, style. Um, pretty nice looking drawings. I, I kind of like what Jake was just mentioning with the with the light outline and then a little bit of paint. Um, I think the the clarity of the design is is really nice. And there's some great uh, great style going on here. Um, the characters don't all feel consistent in in my opinion to the to the story. Like this one, the the scarecrow is the one that really stands out to me as not belonging to that world. doesn't seem like a scarecrow in any way. It just says the word scarecrow. Um, how do you guys feel about that? Um, it feels more crow than scarecrow um, with the black feathers. Yeah. So I don't know if that's what if that's what they're going through, and crows like to collect shiny things maybe. Um, yeah, because I think if, if, where you're going with the lion, you're, 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 that's a real lion's tail. I mean... You know, it's got the, the little thing at the end, the little puffy mm -hmm. fur, and then the, the mane. And so as you go through each character, I think what you're saying, Lee, is you got to be kind of consistent on how you apply that, you know, your rules. You're setting up rules for these characters, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. And it's, I mean, I think the design work is all good. I just, I think conceptually that character's leaving me lacking a little bit. Um now I'm going to probably just walk into the full uh, hell firestorm by saying this. I just want to mention the anime style to me seems generic. Um, I know I shouldn't say that. 
because I always get beat up by my students when I say that. You're, you're uh, dead to me, Lee. <laughs> 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 but uh, it, it, it's, it, it works. And like, you know, I see a lot of, uh, you know, anime films that I really like. Um, in my opinion, wh where do you guys land on there? Because I guess, I guess going over to Glinda, that's probably the most successful one, in my opinion, of this grouping. Yeah. Beautifully drawn. Love the details. Feel like I've seen the character a million times. Um, so I don't know where to go with that because I know it's part of this style. So I, I guess I'm asking you guys, how do we critique well, anime? Work? Again, it depends. Like, and I know what you're saying because in in my classes at at the university, I don't let them draw in the anime style simply because it is someone else's style. I wouldn't let them draw in Disney style. I don't want them um, copying a style. I want them to innovate. And I think that's what you're what you're kind of saying. As as far as like, you know, we we gear these classes to telling stories mostly for comic books and for children's books and uh, graphic novels and things like that and so for for that application it would be hard to get work with an anime style so that's probably why we're kind of discouraging of, of that but having said that there are people who get work in anime styles in America so I'm probably but that's not our forte <laughs> this would work for a comic like that um... Washu could get comic work if if this was brought up, you know, five more notches to a prof more professional level. Yeah, I, but, I just uh, ask you guys because I, I want help in critiquing it because I see it a lot and I don't want to just be like the, the old man who yells at anime. But then I have my concerns about it too because I do, yeah. it does feel the same. So I, I It feels to me like um, uh, these were all... Uh, Dorothy feels like a unique pose that that Washu made on their own. The yeah. other three feel like like the poses were copied and just the um, the uh, you know the details were swapped out. That's what it feels like to me. I feel like I've seen poses like that before. It may not, but we're, when you get into the anime world, there is a lot of similarities, and you really, if you want to stand out in that world, you really have to rest on concept and and make something unique so i think that's why that's why people are drawn to like miyazaki film so much because the settings and the characters and all of it is so beautifully drawn and so specific to the story um and i guess that's where i would push this artist too is to like start start trying to find your own voice a little bit even within this this realm because I, they've got the talent these drawings are gorgeous mm -hmm. All right. Okay, great. Sorry, I'm stuck. Thank you, Washu. Okay, so this one is Cheryl Eklund. Eklund, I hope I'm saying that, that correctly. Uh, this one, to me, I'm a little bit lost on the, the theme. Remember in my hierarchy here, the concept, a clear, cohesive concept. I struggled with this one. Um, I like some of the details. I don't know what's going on with this. Oh, she's holding the dog. Um, yeah, I just str I struggled a lot trying to just kind of decipher what's going on. The layout, like Jake was saying, the um, the characters off the plane. So I think this artist needs to work on some of the basics. I would suggest some of the basic drawing classes and uh, and lighting and shade. I feel like it's a beginning stage. Um, what do you guys think? Uh, yeah, I agree. Um, it's it's just this is. Concept-wise, I see it's sort of like an emo goth like sort of vibe to it, uh, and and it is consistent across the characters in that. Um, but I, I think where it really starts falling apart is um, uh, the the amateurness of of the uh, execution. I guess I would say. It so, just, so basically, it lacks form. And uh, your, I mean, your class that's coming out, I think, would be perfect for this stylizing humans. That's true. That's a great call. Yes. Because and also uh, the hair class too. If you want to watch out for the scratchy hair, but go ahead, Will. Sorry. I'm going to tell a really quick story. I'll make it really quick. <laughs> and when I was in college, I could not, for the life of me, draw a human form, like, to save my life, from, from out of my head. You know what I mean? I couldn't even mm -hmm. rough it out. Um, and I got an A on an assignment because I plagiarized characters from a children's book. And it, I felt empty inside. Like, I knew I didn't earn the A, you know. And, um, and so 
that but but over time you know and learning these techniques I had nowhere to go um, and 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 felt like I was kind of lost in 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 making up these characters and that's why um, I think these classes are <laughs> I'm just reading the comments I think the classes are so important because they really give you a place to start having that place to start means that you don't have to find the perfect piece of reference to base your character off of and spend hours looking and, and you know on Google Images you can just start and, and that's what you're teaching them how to do in your your class also some of the other ones that we have so it's kind of a shameless plug but it's true I mean like having the knowledge of where to start will actually help you with the form uh, because you've got some really fun ideas on these um, Cheryl and um, being able to execute those is just even more fun to be able to, to make it look exactly like you want, like the vision right. in your mind. Right. Yep. Yep. Great advice. A good story, man. I, I think I think just knowing where to go is is half the battle. Um. So yeah, the, take watch the drawing fundamentals class and then Jake's class coming out, and uh, I think you'll be head of the game. Yeah, Larissa makes a great point that you can learn a lot by copying. Absolutely. Okay. I don't mean to say that you should never copy. You should be copying other people's art. Uh, but when you get to an assignment like this, like Jake pointed out on the anime one, it, some of those poses look like they were found poses. And the problem with that is you can you can make some great art that way. You can't make a career that way. Um, because when you get assignments, those assignments, you're never going to be able to find the right poses to satisfy the whole assignment. Never. Right. Yeah. So just study form. Understand form and basic shapes. And apply it to human human form. Yeah, and take as many, go to many figure drawing classes as you can. That'll help you a ton. Yep. Definitely will. Okay, this next one I love. Gerald Pilgrim? This yes. is my favorite one, actually. Uh, it's between this and, a, and two others. So but I love this one. Good. I mean, it, lo it looks um, like we were talking about earlier. The, the, this, the concept is clear. The shapes are definitely look like they're made by the same artist, and the and the illustration style is so unique and and um, and I feel like it's highly evolved to this artist. So yeah, and the presentation. This, is good. It, it, this is better than so many children's books I see at the library. Yeah, you know, if I saw this on a book cover, I'd check it out. I'd buy it on a bookstore. I would too. The limited color is such a cool thing. I can never get my editors and and publishers to do it for some reason. But I love everybody loves it when they see it, and this is a honestly. Good I wouldn't change anything. Yep. Yeah, this is really strong. Really and I, I really like the detail. And this is a good one to look at for, you know, that there are areas where the tone is applied in a really kind of a soft, blurry fashion, and then there's places where there's tons of little details, and and that's really. Um, that that's that mix that you gotta have in order to really look professional with your work. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're if you're too much one way or or the other, you're it's a it's a dead giveaway. You know. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really really good. Every every single bit of it. And I would say the only thing that I would look at if I was if I was Cheryl is does the rest of my work hold up to this one? Because this would definitely set the bar. And if you can answer yes to that, and get your work to the publishers. Because you'll start yeah, working yeah. pretty quick. Yeah. Now, if you were, if we had time and you were doing a draw over, Jake, there'd mm -hmm. probably be a few things that you'd point out, right? Just nitpicks. Nitpicks, but nothing, overall, nothing major. Right. Yeah. Amazing. Really nice work. Great. Next up is Chip. Saw this a few times on the on the forum. Really cool designs, and he, and what I love about it is. His approach is just doesn't stop working on it. He'll accept any kind of feedback and then change it, which so I want all you guys to have that kind of attitude is go in and, and work it and, you know, do whatever. So I've seen a lot of different versions of this one come out. Um, I still, one of the critiques on the forum was the graphic design was hurting a little, hurting the page a little bit. And I can't help but still feel like it's hurting it a tad bit. What do you, do you guys think just as far as an instant read that there's too much graphic design going on in terms of the type? I kind of feel like if you have to label these characters, um, you didn't do your job 100%. Like, I mean, I don't, I, I don't think he has to label them. Uh, that, I mean, if you pull those labels off, you still get who's who. Right, and that's what I mean. Is yeah. I mean, I see... The, now, the Wicked Witch of the West is the only one that, to me, 
I don't know if I would get that one without the label, but the others I would. Uh, in context with the rest of them, I would just assume oh, she's green, and she's got you know an, uh, one of those pentagrams on her forehead. She's probably a witch, and fire coming from her hands. She's probably not the good witch with the pentagram and the spikes on her. Uh... <laughs> yeah, um, not the good witch. Here's a, graphic design is is its own little box of worms, or however the saying goes, a bag of cats, whatever it is, and so. Um, I would I would only go there if you're good at graphic design, uh, if if it can really level the, the piece up. And I feel like you're right; it does sort of um, make it a little busier than it needs to be. If these yeah. guys were just on a white background or a, just a mid-tone gray background. Um, the characters would pop so much more, and it would be. Uh, I think I, we're just talking about present, presentation here. I think that would be better as far as the actual character designs. Um, they go back to that that area that Will was talking about, where they're just a little soft, and I want a more definition, um, crisper edges, a little bit more defined shapes, and I don't know if you add line work to it or you go in another pass with a hard brush and and, and add some nice harder shadows or something, but I feel like I feel like it needs that. And then I'm going to say one more thing too. There's just a, needs to be a little more cohesiveness in in your design language. Um, I feel like Dorothy and Lollipop Kid are in the same universe, and then I feel like um, Flying Monkey is from a you know could have been drawn by somebody completely different, and the witch looks like she could have been drawn by someone someone else too. So, um, what what worked really well about Cheryl Pilgrim's one previously is they all look like they were drawn by the same person. There was a cohes cohesiveness between the design of everybody. It all came from the same world. And this one, it just, uh, your design elements just need to, you need to link them together more with sh certain shapes, certain, certain rendering styles, or something like that. Yeah, to totally yeah. agree. I don't, I don't know what, what the overall uh, world is supposed to be, especially if I just look at Dorothy. Now, I know she's coming from one world and ending up in the other world. So, uh, so maybe she can be separated a little bit, but then the, it, it, you can definitely tell Chip was more comfortable with the two evil characters than the good ones. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe, maybe work on that. I mean, and just see. I feel like this is like a Suicide Squad world, Wizard yeah. of Oz world, you know, something like that. Yeah. Okay, so guys. Yeah, we got to. We are going to be here for four hours. <laughs> All right, do we, go, go fast. we need to set a timer. We got to set a timer. I know. We we'll start from here on out. We just do thumbs up or thumbs down. <laughs> hey. <laughs> all right. I got this one, Lee. Is that all right? Yeah, it's fine. This was the next one, and I just did a really quick little draw. Can you see it? Oh wait, not yet. Hold on. Oh yeah, go ahead. Okay. So this was Chris's, and I, just real quick, I, I noticed that you were going for like really working on the mechanics of your drawing. It looks like. And so I just did a really quick one of this hand. Just remember, it, everything has to, to flow around form, and, and this, this little hand felt like it kind of got away from you. So, you know, it's got, it, it bends at the, uh, at the knuckles, right, when it goes around that, that, that waist. And so just try to keep that in mind as you're looking at that, at that hand, you know, what is it actually doing, and where, where, is, uh, where is it bisected, the fingers, look like they kind of go into the, the upper part of the hand instead of kind of having that fold there. Yeah, I actually just drew that on a character design recently. Oh, cool. So you can kind of see there, how it just kind of scoops up and the fingers curl around. Cool. Okay, that's it. That's just, we could just do stuff like that. We don't have to give a whole complete Short routine. and sweet. Totally true. Yeah. I, I did want to point out that uh, the, the style of that of that last one, um, almost kind of looks like an illuminated book. Uh, at least the uh, Dorothy the Falconer and the Court Gesture kind of oh, yeah. like illuminated book look. And I just wanted to point out if you guys haven't seen uh, Secret of Kells, they use that style and they just kick some major booty with it. Um, and so I think you can push your overall shapes. If you notice uh, in these designs, they're all about the same height and they're all the same width, all the same head height. Um, and so it kind of uh, uh, limits the design possibilities a little bit, even though I love some of the shapes um, on the characters, just like, you know, little details. 
And so if you kind of look at what they did here, you know, they really broke up that silhouette like we were talking about earlier and still use that illuminated manuscript kind of style. So maybe uh, can use some of those as a, as a way to move these forward. Anything else, you guys? Mm -mm. All right, we got nope. to cruise through these. Uh, this is Dan Sorensen. Um, pretty cool. I could see this for like a young, uh, 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 you know, three to five year old kind of animated TV show kind of style. So I kind of like that. Um, I would work on varying your line weight a little bit because it feels very, very even the whole way, um, and which makes it feel digital. Like you're using like one Photoshop brush uh, that doesn't have the settings turned on. So be careful of that that line work. I'm going to say something that's sort of harsh, um, but honest, and I feel like I've seen that care that scarecrow before. So watch that. Like if I if I you know, I don't know how how do you guys feel? Have you? Yeah. I'll back yeah. you up. Okay, so when you're coming up with solutions, these have got to be, you, you've got to throw away what you've seen as much as possible and, and really try. And some of them do. They, you know, the soup can head. I don't feel like I've seen that character before. Um, I would, this would be another one where I'd make the comment that uh, I think they should all be standing poses so for consistency. Mm -hmm. um, but but I, I like the I like that approach, you know. Um, coming up with found objects to solve that problem. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And and, and real dynamic poses, especially with the lion. Um, I don't mind the sitting pose. Um, so I like I like some of the action going on. Mm -hmm. Concept-wise, I like how they're, all their costumes are like homemade looking. Yeah, yeah it's great. I think this Same. one definitely has some potential. I'd, I'd, I'd explore it further. Yeah. All right, next one is going to be... <laughs> this is David Vallejo. This is really, really funny. <laughs> this dog is hilarious. Um, I think these are really well drawn. Uh, I love your love your line work, even though it's it <laughs> it's uh it's uncomfortable for me to look at Dorothy. She just <laughs> yeah. No place like Stockton. Um, I would like <laughs> when I see the Axe Man and how how wonderfully lyrical that um, that gesture is. I feel like for the kind of character that Dorothy is, man, you really got to push those shoulders and those hips out. Just watching that right. pops, and you'll know what I'm talking about. She gets a little static. Like, yeah, they get they get sassy and animated, and uh, yeah, you got to you got to move those shoulders and hips away from each other. My my big comment on this one is, I mean, uh, like going beyond, like you know, I, I love the style of it and the rent, like the the application of color. And the and the line work and everything is great. I would vary the the size of the characters to be totally. I feel more fitting. Like, why is Dorothy bigger than the axe guy? You know, like mm -hmm. I think I think just if you just went in and just played with these sizes, this page could look a lot better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was right. It feels it's really big, confident though. Medium, small. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, great looking line work. Almost has that Arthur Rackham type feel that I was talking about earlier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the watercolor, it's great. Yeah. I agree with Will. Change those sizes and you got something, definitely something you can work with there. I don't know why it's in advancing. Hey, I got this next one. Can I have this? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. All right. Let me steal the screen here. I, just I love, seeing, to do I love seeing really... these ones where every where people are submitting every third Thursday. It's awesome. We love seeing it from you guys. All the different assignments. And yeah. Stuff. Yeah. You guys rock. It every time, so it's cool. Uh oh. Where'd my stylus go? Oh no. Little Terry. Oh, here it is. Okay. Really quick. I'm just gonna sh just show one little thing that I think would make this better, and that is. Uh, and this is Dulcie's, I think. Is that right? Uh huh. Yeah. So, like, if you look at look at this uh, little little uh, lion character, I feel like just one little tiny thing is it's it's got a lot of furry detail, probably too much. And don't be afraid to let those details fall into shadow where where it's logical that there would be shadowy voids, you know, and and keep your details. In, in, a little bit more sparse, and in, in just in a few areas, and what you'll what you'll end up with is a more um, stronger silhouette, and it'll also give your viewer 
a little bit of relief. So if we look oh, at whoa, my uh, computer doesn't like to play with GoToMeeting too well sometimes, but you can see the difference there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. So, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, good so that's call. All I got, that's all I got to say about that. I'll just add that I like the concept on this one. I think that flying monkey is really cool gargoyle thing. Yeah. And Dorothy, like Dorothy has pulled off quite well too. I like the, I like her style. Yeah, I like the boots. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah, great work. Oops. All right, next one. You guys see how I'm trying to one up you with little drawovers, right? <laughs> Hold on, I lost my break now. Eva leads. Okay. Eva leads. Eva. Eva. All right, this has a definitely a, a really cool style, um, reminiscent of the the Gorillas Illustrator. Who is that mm. that did those? Jamie Hewitt. Yeah, so you can definitely see that influence, especially in the face of the monkey. So, so just be careful because it definitely goes there really quick. Even though I do think there's some, it's successful. Um, I don't know. How do you guys feel about that when it's when it's instantly kind of harkens to another style or another specific person? Yeah, I think this is different enough. I wouldn't. I, uh, in fact, it's I like, see other influences. I see influences from some web comics. Okay. Okay. That, that I follow. I know what you're saying, and I agree. But I also think that um, we're overly critical sometimes. I'm just pointing out you're, there. This this one doesn't seem like it's beating, <laughs> this doesn't seem like it's beating you over the head. But I just wondered what <laughs> you thought when you insert the the, the, t the Tin Man. I feel like I've I've kind of seen that face a little bit, but not really. Yeah. The, the main main issue here for me is again the size thing. I feel like that monkey should be 50% smaller. I feel like Tin Man and Scarecrow should should be uh, smaller compared to the lion. I want to see different s shape sizes. I think that would really improve this. Yeah, I think I think the 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 Scarecrow character is the best one of the group. Um, mm -hmm. And and it's like. Yeah, it makes me think the lion needs to be pushed a lot further when I see that scarecrow. And the monkey, by the way, I agree with your assessment that it should be smaller. Um, the Tin Man and the and the uh, the lion feel like they could be pushed, especially the the arms and legs on the Tin Man. And uh, and then overall, the, the lion feels like he was kind of phoned in compared to those middle two feel very, very realized. And I love those little birds on his hat. Mm -hmm. Beautiful little design there. So I would go back, work on those outer two and uh, change some of the shapes up a little bit more. And, and, and this one is portfolio caliber, in my opinion. Great. This is Holly Williamson. This has a cool, very cool kind of children's book um, style. I really love seeing the natural media. I don't know if this was digital or not. If she's there, maybe she can let us know if it's traditional. I feel like it's traditional. Um, so I like seeing it. Um, the only place that uh, that I would start to critique it is they're exactly all the same size, almost like you have a, a, a doll that you then put the you know respective clothing on Tin Man and Scarecrow and Dorothy, uh, and so you're starting with kind of the same base, and so I would really change that up quite a bit. But I love the rendering or the mark making. Yeah, I would say vary the faces too. Yeah, it feels like the same face on kind of move to each one. Yeah, my my main comment on this one is is just watch things like look at Dorothy, and look at her uh, arm size compared to her leg size, and it's those those little things actually communicate in the silhouette more than a lot of other things. So, you know that that makes her look kind of hulkish and really strong, and and uh, when really she's she's supposed to be the probably the smallest, more frail um, character in the group. Yeah. Great point on the arms. I didn't pay attention to that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just get enamored with media. <laughs> Sometimes I just love seeing all that texture and some of the color, but I agree with some of those details need to be cleaned up. Sorry, I don't know why this thing's not advancing. Oh, yeah. Holly now? Uh, this is uh, just... Oh. Jan. So this is Jan. Will, you want to take this one? Oh, yeah. Um, this one's really fun. Um, I, 
I didn't know where to take this one as far as like as far as the uh, the style because it, it feels like it's fairly consistent with that. I I mostly looked at this one for mechanics and um, just looking at the way they're standing. There would be some things that would be easier to explain with a drawover on this one. However, I didn't do a drawover. Um, uh, but basically, just look at mechanics, and if you don't know what we're talking about, um, we definitely have classes on character design um, that, that show that, and posing and stylizing characters. Um, and also the, um, what was that other one that we did the uh, with the bean shape? That might be a good one for this. Yeah. Because yeah, it really yeah. talks about, like, the, 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 look, just looking at the scarecrow, the, the leg, um, those two legs where they come out, you know, one of those feet really should be coming towards us. And uh, the drawing mechanics for that are is fairly simple once you start to, to learn how to do it. But right here it's, it's showing that um, it, it's demonstrating that there's a lack of understanding there, which is, which is fine. We just need to kind of start to... to to get some of those basics of the the building blocks of shapes to be able to to pop that out to give the illusion that it's, of depth that it's coming towards us. Yeah. The other thing and is, also is, she's drawing it all from straight from the front, which is the hardest pose to do, in my opinion. If you turn some of these characters three quarter, then all of a sudden the the overlaps become obvious and the overall shape becomes a little bit more obvious. But drawing things straight from the front is the hardest uh, angle, in my opinion, to get really dynamic shapes and design. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, is there's something really nice and almost abstract about this. Like, like if 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 it's this flat and it's this linear, man, go all the way and just take it, take away that hair texture, take away that hay texture, and make the whole background flat. And you could really get into almost like close to like uh, Eric Carl mm -hmm. um, territory. Mm -hmm. Great, cool. That's a great um, crit That's right there. Yeah. Yeah, instead of trying to like, oh, now learn all the all how to render and how to how to draw in perspective and all that stuff, just to take it the other way and uh, and make it more about design. And I think that's a Yeah, maybe the maybe the um tin man is just a lot more flat, you know, cuz I think with the with with trying to show dimension on that on that can and and the the shoulders, it throws the others more flat. Like what yeah, so like this style a, a two-year-old can really comprehend and, and like line, you know, point out that's well, a, a lot line. of board that's books are done in styles like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, and that's the other thing too. You want a career in illustration? Play to your strengths. If if you are just not good at rendering out, but you're great at flat, you know, uh, shape-based design, just lean into that. And, and she's own she's it. saying she ran out of time to render it too. Okay. So I kind that's, of like, that's it, like it being flat. I mean, we were talking about that over here in the um, the chat. I don't know. I mean, if, if you're going to render it, I guess we'd have to see what that looks like. But I totally agree with where Jake and Will are going. Go flat. Find some other artists who are working flat. You, with this style, you could also start incorporating collage and stuff like that. And it works really well, and it's fun. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So okay. we got to hurry. Yeah, we're, we're still not hurrying. So that's one hour, we're one hour in just as a, as a time marker. So we do need to yeah. – start cruising through. Um, uh, this is Jason Bowen. Uh, really, really great, great looking shapes. Uh, love all the, the silhouettes look good. If we, if we just filled them all in with a Sharpie marker, shapes look great. Although the Scarecrow and the um, Tin Man are pretty similar in terms of their silhouette. Um, overall, the I love that the outside of the shape is sharp. The inside feels a little too soft, so watch out for that Photoshop brush being set to too fuzzy. Mm -hmm. Next. Great. All right, next. This, this is great. also a little bit too dark overall. This is, this is our fire round, right? <laughs> Go through yeah. whatever they call it. Um, the mayor feels a little out of step with the um, the other three, in my opinion. So I just need to know where if I if I was taking this uh, design further, I need to know how he fit, how the overall design fits in and what the world is played, about. played by Danny DeVito. <laughs> sure. <laughs> this is Jennifer Jennifer Bourne. Um, really cool animated style. Love the the shape of this grasshopper, and that 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 gesture is just really cool. The ant Dorothy as an ant. Oh, these are these are these are really cool. For some reason, this didn't show up in my in the group I originally downloaded. Um, so I'm just seeing this one for the first time. Did you guys see this one earlier? Yeah, I, yeah, I saw it. 
Okay. But I, I, the one thing on this one that I think, like, there's such a great uh, attempt to stylize a grasshopper and the rhinoceros beetle. I'm wondering if there's a way to keep the termite, you know, more, like, maybe the tin is just the color, but like, going more insecty on that one, and then even more, more insecty on the ant, Dorothy, too. I don't know. Yeah, it, it it feels to me again. We have a case here where where maybe this person, uh, the grasshopper and the beetle, feel so solid uh, that I I I think they're they're definitely pulling from reference a little more than Dorothy and the termite. Um, and so uh, I'd say yeah. I'd say step back from the reference a little bit. Let it influence you, but don't don't let it take over you know also think about the natural materials that you're that you're trying to just that you're trying to showcase here i would probably if, if if i had the choice make the 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 tin the tin man out of something like an egg like a like a beetle because it has that exoskeleton anyway mm -hmm. and so you could probably lean into that and have that look a little bit more tin just naturally so i don't know now you don't want to start from scratch and redesign these characters, but just think about what the material is already, and then and then lean into that a little bit more. Because mm -hmm. yep. you can make bugs look. I mean, there are bugs that are gray, and I think you could. It would read as the Tin Man. Okay, let's go. Cool theme though. Really cool theme. Mm -hmm. um, this one ended up really. Uh, I can't tell enough from it because because of the resolution that it was turned in. Yeah, none of the other ones are doing that. Um, let me make it a little smaller. That was really small for me too. Okay, there we go. So if we if it didn't translate, um, we need a JPEG that's about what do we say a thousand pixels in one dimension in the long. Yeah, at least yeah. something in that something in that realm, minimum. Everything. But we don't want to go too. Big. My critique on this is it feels like uh, we're still on our first or second pass. Um, as far as rendering, and there's just not enough. Like they, it feels like it should be blown up to print print resolution size, and then and then a a, a pass with detail gone gone through on it. On top of it, I agree with that 100. percent Like the concept, though. I mean, this is kind of I guess yeah, zombie concept. Zombie esque. Um, Wizard of Oz, love that. This is uh, Jody Gregg. Um, these these characters, I love the silhouettes. I think it's cool that you varied the the size on all of them. They feel a little uh, stiff, almost like they're they're characters you'd buy on the shelf. Like that would be the pose on the shelf. Um, cardboard, a yeah. Bit cardboard cutout ish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'd uh, work on the gesture. I'd say just presentation wise, um, I'd eliminate that, that that background and just do white, or do a, a mid just one mid tone grayish color. Presentation wise, I think that would make these characters pop a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, can you guys read the concept on this one? Is it in terms of what the world she's trying to show is, or where? What What do you guys think about that? It feels like um, like Midwest style. <laughs> okay. Seven brides for seven brothers type of thing, maybe. Oklahoma. Yeah, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Which, Concept-wise, I mean, that's where Dorothy already kind of is, so I think that could have been pushed a little further. Yeah. But I like that Dorothy. She's cool. Yeah. And I like what the subtleness of the, of the lion, too. So there's, there's yeah. a lot of good stuff going on in this one, for sure. It's like almost there. <laughs> yeah. Another hour on each character again. Yeah. This one was a great concept. Um, I, I was telling Will earlier as we were looking at him, uh, that this one would be, a, I think it would be taken further for sure. This, like Jake was saying about a pass, I think this could use one more pass. It needs a little something else. I'm not sure what it is yet, um, but I love the concept. It could be a good uh, iPad game. Yeah. Here, here's the main problem with this one is that Dog's got a giant head, uh, Glinda's got a giant head, Witch has a giant head, Lion has this tiny little head. I didn't see that. That's so funny that you saw that. But you could fix that with. Just making, just taking the whole orange and head and making it bigger. Right. Yeah, just put the ears on the orange. On the and put the eyes and the muzzle on the orange, and yeah. I love the kiwi. Yeah, to me, it feels like the the lion is wearing one of those cones. It's just in perspective, you know, that the dogs yeah. can't bite you. Yeah. 
or bite themselves. But I love the concept. I want to see one more character. I want to see. I want to see Tin Man and Scarecrow and Dorothy. Yeah. I would take this further. Watch out for this overlap right there. It looks like the hat's sitting almost in front of the lime. So that lime needs to come up in front right here on the. Is it a lime or a kiwi? Or kiwi. That's what I meant. Kiwi. kiwi. Yeah, it's a kiwi. Okay. Phew. Almost got my fruit wrong. Don't get your fruits mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought this one had some really fun things going on. Yeah. Colors are cool. Design is cool. My, uh, my, my. My biggest problem on this one was the I felt like the lion wasn't at the same quality as the other three. Mm -hmm. I like his gesture though. Yeah, um, and I think why is that? It's 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 really hard to stylize a cat standing because they just don't do it very much, right? Is yeah, you have to really one? give them some human features. Yeah, I think if you're gonna tough. make them stand, give them human legs. Don't try to force cat legs into that pose. Yeah, that's tricky. I love that yeah. Tin Man. No, he's cool. And the yeah, the Tin Man has got a great, great shapes going on. Great. I don't know about it. Cool. She feels like she doesn't fit the the story to me. She feels older. Um, but then the skateboard kind of didn't. I don't know. What do you guys think about Dora? That's true. I don't know what the world is here. Is you know, is this uh, 1950s Dorothy? It's a, cr it's a crazy Wizard of Oz that doesn't have to necessarily fit into your expectations and stereotypes. <laughs> I tell you what, though. Look at those silhouettes, man. They're strong silhouettes. I feel like this would make a great game. It already looks like a game yeah. to me for some reason. It does. Um, so I would say move forward with this. Love to see some environments that would go with this. Yeah. Maybe, maybe at some point that could be another assignment is take these characters that we already built and now build an environment for them. Yeah, that should that should be what we do next month, Will. Well, that's a good. Well, I I kind of already came up with the concept no, for this month. Kidding, but, but for those of you guys right who want, for those of you guys who want to add on to this concept, and a lot of these are really really strong, that might be a, a chance to 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 take it to the next step is come up with what an environment would look like. Well, yeah. Lee, you can continue this when it's your month. Maybe I will. You've already got your concept figured sure. out. Done deal. Um. One last little comment on this one is cer certain areas of the characters get blurry and other areas are really crisp. And so, um, and that's a good thing in, in some places, but I feel like in some places uh, a little too blurry. And also watch your blacks. I'd, I'd love it to be some purples in there and some other colors, and so just straight black. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Katie Erickson. We can't Come stop on. critiquing. This is cool. This looks like a middle grade reader. Um, very, very active kind of uh, part of the publishing industry right now. If you guys mm -hmm. are, are you guys illustrating those kind of books, Will and Jake? Middle grade. I'm not. And then, uh, actually, yeah, yeah. Get I a did lot just of do one. To do it. Yeah, Will, you just finished one. I don't think of myself as as that, but I did do one. Uh, there's a ton of work in this in this area. A ton of work, and um, uh, sometimes they'll even add a spot color. I just finished one where I had to do 125 illustrations, and we got to use two colors throughout the whole thing, and it was so fun to do. Um, and this, to me, just just screams middle grade reader as like a spot illustration. I think the characters are real done. Does not say Wizard of Oz to me in any way. <laughs> so that's the only problem. That's a good point. Last year I did. Um, somebody's asking, does it? But does it pay? Um, I did one last year, and it it paid better. I got paid better than with a picture book. Yeah, I did too. I mean, for for the time that I put into it. it and, so. and occasionally, they can that you can work in uh, royalty deals with middle grade readers as well. It's not a flat fee, and so it just depends on on what you're doing. If you're starting out, it doesn't pay a ton to do that kind of work. You're going to do a lot of illustrations. Uh, and you'll probably lose the rights to the work, but as you do enough of them, you'll be able to uh, negotiate that. There are illustrators who have basically paid for their whole retirement and then some with middle grade readers because they negotiated for a royalty after the first books became really big. Yeah, and Mary, that's one Mary, person, and they worked on Harry Potter. Yeah. <laughs> no, and then <laughs> Red Hellquist, series of unfortunate two people, and they worked on Harry Potter and series of unfortunate. A hundred percent more than you. 
Okay, so the so concept, all you gotta do um, is work on a book that sells billions of copies. <laughs> <laughs> so concepts lost on this one, but uh, but cool style. Um, I love. I love this one. Love these. Um, this would make great packaging kind of design. Feels very very uh, European to me. Um, it's really cool. But my one comment on it is I don't want so much. I, the shapes are perfect. I don't want the shadow and the light. I just want them flat shapes. Yeah, mm -hmm. get that shadow out of there. Hopefully that's on its own layer and just dump it. But yep. could she have a shadow that matches the flat? She doesn't need it. It it it's it's tough to pull it off in this style in but my opinion. Is she allowed to have it? No. For this style. No, she's not. No shadows. That's against the design rules. <laughs> yeah, they won't let her have it. They'll take it out and post. Mm -hmm. I love that monkey. I would make that's that monkey good. bigger and use it on your website as your logo. Yeah, that's a good I idea. I want a plushie yeah. of that monkey. Glenda is such a cool design too. There's a gym, like a what is it? What do they call them in the in the circus? A uh, trapeze girl or a gym gymnast girl? What's a word for someone who does like crazy aerobics? Acrobat. Acrobatics. An acrobat. Maybe. Whatever. Okay, moving on. Anyway, this is, <laughs> this is a great style, and if this and if Katie's other work is up to this, um, I would also suggest she goes ahead and gets the work to the out there, um, get, make some postcards, get it to publishers, because you will get work with this style. Yeah, and get rid of that blurry shadow. Get done. Yeah, shadow's gone. Uh, this is Keisha Morris. Pretty. Cool. I'm trying to understand the the style. Feels almost like a Saturday morning cartoon kind of animated series to me. Um, could definitely work. My biggest question is why does um, the Glenda the Witch have six fingers on that one hand? Oh, what? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, yeah. Uh -oh. Uh, <laughs> and only five on the other hand. Thanks a lot, Jake. Nobody else would have noticed that. Uh, better Jake. I get that from my animation days where we had to draw it. 50 hands <laughs> over and over and over again. What's uh, funny is you're allowed to have th only three fingers. Why yes. can't you have five? You can have five. You just can't have six. Both, yeah, both hands, but both well, She doesn't have six. She has a thumb and five fingers. <laughs> All right, quit talking about the hands. Let's get to the rest of it. Quick, quick, quick. The lion is cool. The Scarecrow is cool. I think Dorothy is really cool. I think the witch is the only one that stands out to me as not really fitting in the rest of the design. Because the other designs yeah. were so far. There's other ones. Everyone's so consistent with their finger numbers. Um, <laughs> yeah. Fix your fingers. You're really hung up on that. <laughs> <laughs> you, guys, you guys think that the witch should be switched out of all of them? The rest of them are good? Yeah, well, if you look, her head proportionally is smaller. Like it. You know, if the head was a little bit bigger, she'd fit in with the group. Yeah. Yeah. I like their boots. I mean, cool design. It's kind of like a futuristic, um, futuristic Dorothy or Wizard yeah. of Oz type of thing going on here. I, li I like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. And I think the I think the drawings are really cool too. So I just work on the witch character and clean up some details, like the fingers. <laughs> Kevin. Okay. These are. Yeah. These are really cool. Totally different style than all the rest of them. So I just want to point that out. I mean, surely you guys can see that too. Uh, but that should be noted. As you, as an art director is flipping through all these, all of a sudden you come to one that's totally different. I'm going to stop and I'm going to look. Um, and I think yeah. these are just so, so good and so cool. There is some tweaks that I, that I would make. Me and Will were talking about them earlier uh, this evening. Um, the lion, in my opinion, is just right on the money. And so is the scarecrow. I think the Tin Man and Dorothy need a little work. Mm -hmm. They're all also a little dark overall. So, in controlling your uh, values, you know, look at other professional illustrators, black and white, and just just do a side by side. If you're not seeing it, but to me, they they, they feel like they're um, overall the they're just uh, you know if you were adjusting them in Photoshop, it just the sliders too far to the dark side. Yeah. Um, my, uh, one Thing. Go ahead, Will, and then I'll say my one thing. My last one was with Dorothy. I feel like she should be younger. Um, mm. she, she feels woman esque. You know, like a, yeah. like a woman in this. Like Dorothy's mom. Yeah. yeah, that's true. My my comment, my critique would be: if you 
took out their backgrounds and just gave us a big, like a green, a really bright green or a bright red or something, just a pop of color in there. And these would be like posters you could hang on a wall. It'd be postcards. It'd yeah. be book plates. Um, it it'd really be something that you'd want to do. Just give it a little pop of color somewhere. I tell you what, I'd, really uh, I'd love to see Kevin um, illustrate, you know, in spots and, and single page illustrations, the Wizard of Oz, and see how the rest of these illustrations would come out based on these. I'd love to see more. Yep. Really cool. Definitely pro, in my opinion. <laughs> William says uh, he hopes he's making a living because he's so good. Well, he's not here tonight, so we can't ask him. Yeah, okay. He's good, for sure. These were really fun. I really like the shapes on these. These are um, awesome. Yeah. Man, that Oz, Just, dude, that mm -hmm. Oz is on the money. That's the yeah. best one I've seen, like that in terms of Oz and a, and a creative approach to it and a cohesive Very style. Creative. Very awesome. Yeah. And you get what it is simply because, I, I mean, I, I feel like if, even if we didn't know what this assignment was, we'd get it from seeing that. Yeah. I, can I? I'm sorry. My wife came in. I had to talk to her, but um. This one, like, stopped me in my tracks. This one and the other one um, with the red, little spot red. Like, this is so solid. I love it. Yeah. I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't change anything. This I is like, pretty. I yeah. want to read this comic. Can you Except really dark me? shadows. Oh, tell me what's going on with, uh, with, with Dorothy. What's happening there? That's the only thing that I just didn't understand. Is something growing out of the well, ground and attacking her? And then it's enough for me to want to open up the book and find out what's going on. You gotta, you gotta read. I'll give you, you that. Buy it. I'll give you that. Like I love the idea that maybe we're in, we're in Oz, and there's this fungus that's taking over, you know, the countryside, and Dorothy's, you know, having to fight it, and she has to get to the wizard before she's overcome with this stuff. You know, the 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 uh, the Tin Man lost his heart due to the fungus. The wit, the you know. He, yeah. he doesn't show the scarecrow, but his brain was lost to the fungus, and so they have to they have to get to that wizard, and and it's maybe it's the witch, and she's like, I'll take over the land of Oz with the fungus or something. I don't know. I think it's cool. <laughs> I'm sold based on what you just said. I want to see that. I want to yeah. read that. <laughs> I love it. Um, I think these drawings are so so professional, especially like Dorothy's face. And one thing I want to point out to you guys, if you don't know the seven folds that happen in clothing. You need to research the seven folds. There are seven definite folds that happen when any clothing folds, when somebody bends their arm, when somebody's walking, uh, and they're they're definitive. Like you can you can call them out based on what the shape of the fold is. If you guys don't know them, you need to go uh, learn them. This artist is using every single one of them here: compression folds and diaper folds and zigzag folds. The, the uh, seven deadly folds. Seven deadly folds. You're going to need to learn, <laughs> learn them all. But there is seriously seven. <laughs> if you don't know what they are, you are. Um, it, definitely holding yourself back because if you know what they are and know where they happen, uh, you can kind of make up clothing and have it look believable. Don't feel too bad about yourself right now because I can't name you the seven, <laughs> seven de de deadly fo folds. Really? There's an in fold, diaper fold, uh, um, zigzag fold. There, uh, there's a bunch. I, maybe I'll make a PDF. That'd be cool. This is awesome. Anyway, okay. great work. All right. I'm going to take this next one. Okay, go ahead. Is that all right? You got it? Mm-hmm. Can you see my screen? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this one, when we zoom out, by the way, I, I love a lot of the stuff that's going on, but one of the things I just wanted to show on this was how you see two characters and part of a third, but look at those dresses dropping out. Right? Mm. So, value. Right. So now, well, in that game, well, that's why you you put a mid tone for the background, and then yeah. if you have white, it'll pop. Yeah. I mean, you can make the if you want them to have a white dress, then you have to place them on a darker background. Right. Yep. I love. I absolutely love the detail, and this is what I was talking about. Some of you guys, uh, your your uh, your characters are stay in the blurry mode or the really soft edge soft everything everywhere but look at look at how interesting it is when you when you have um, details against soft 
you know, it really gives you that variety and really um, shows confidence in, in what you're drawing. If you can't put the details in there, it means you don't know how your uh, objects are constructed. Yeah. So you just don't have the confidence to put those down. This is another you one that makes to. me want to, like, what, who are the four young witches of Oz? Like, that's, that's a cool concept. Yeah. Is that a thing? Or is that something she came up with? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, we're moving. Oh, I can't hear Lee. Sorry, I was, I was talking. I had myself muted because I was chewing ice. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was I was commenting on the on the hats that those witches had were just beautiful. I thought they were gorgeous. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, Toys of Oz. That's a great concept. Toys of Oz. Yeah, it's a cool concept. I love the the monkey's amazing. Is that already a toy or is that made up? Because that looks so believable. That's cool. Yeah. Now, my one question is, I don't know where the artist would go with these other than this illustration. Um, is, that, is that valid or not? What do you think? Uh, Story-wise or? Well, just like or, what would another, like the rest of them, we've got characters, and now we can put them in settings, and now we can do things with them. Yeah. What is the, other than making a toy. No, I, wanna, I actually want to see the story. I think it would be cool if like, Dorothy gets sucked up into a tornado and then she's shrunken down and she's in like a kid's nursery. That's oh, so maybe like and Toy Story meets Wizard of Oz. Toy Story meets Wizard of Oz. I think I think there's something there. Sold. I'd love to see um, just sort of like the the characters in their static poses, you know, like the way we've been seeing them. You know, this is, a, this is maybe a little too posed. Yeah, cause it's a good illustration. But if you're if you're presenting the characters like we've been presenting them, then yeah, I want to see uh, I want to see them in their yeah standing neutral pose. Do we want a nose on the scarecrow? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. That's a good idea. I mean, Glenda's a Barbie. Scarecrow's a like a rag doll. Mm -hmm. Lion's a plush. Tin Man could be like a little toy robot and it has sparks coming out. It's cool. Mm -hmm. right, I'm so well, I'm glad I'm people. Like when Jake tells the story, he comes up with the rest of it. <laughs> okay, we got to bring it home. We've okay. got about ten left, nine left. Lightning round. Yeah, we're cru we're cruising through so the trick or treaters. Um, definitely cool. This seems like a sticker pack to me. I think because of the white outline. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. So the, just just a note for the artist. Um, I like love some of the shapes, and it, it looks really fun to me. I can see this used in different kind of branding. Um, in terms of illustration, it, it feels more animation to me. So um, I don't know where. However, if I were if I had this in my portfolio, and it attracted the attention of an art director, my answer would be they were done for stickers. Yeah. Yeah. Period. Because okay. you 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 know you want to show that you. Are doing projects for, or artwork for projects, and they and, love uh, that secondary kind of marketing mm -hmm. stuff with characters. So, right. you don't have to say whether or not the stickers were actually made. You just That's say, right. "Oh, I designed these for a sticker pack." Yep. They were for an awesome sticker project that I made, and never printed. But you don't say that last part. Yeah, cool designs though. Or go the extra mile and just have a pack of stickers and just start sticking them on their desk and on their face. On their face. <laughs> This is Pam Fraley. Uh, they, I think some of the some of the gestural quality of the of the witch is good. They just don't feel they feel like a first pass to me, and I feel like they could they could just be evolved a lot more. I don't know what's going on with the scarecrow, but I but I like the I like the the witch. Yeah, and I was looking at the scarecrow, thinking it. I like the idea of of uh, the design. I would finish out um, and and go like the. The girl, um, Dorothy, her dress feels really volumetric, but then on the scarecrow, his his shirt doesn't. It feels like it, it's really flat, and and we're not really sure how it does it go around him or not. You know, is he naked under there? I mean, you know what I mean. Like it, it gives, it it asks more questions than it answers, and that that's something to to think about when you're when you're drawing these. Okay. Yeah, take take this one farther though. It feels just like a first pass. Mm -hmm. 
Four Musketeers. Cool concept. Um, I don't know. Something about it falls a little bit flat to me. I don't know if it's because they're the they all of them except for Dorothy are the same height. They're almost like the same body actually, with different heads put on them. Uh, mm -hmm. So work on their proportion. Mm -hmm. I think it's an interesting idea. Um, I wonder how, like, where it would go from there. Yeah, like I said, I, th I would explore the shapes first. It'd be an easy place to go because the drawing style is cool. Look at the look at the face on the lion and the hair and stuff. It's really cool. Oh, yeah, it's solid. Good yeah. job with the hair. I just, yeah. I, I, I mean, it, it was a, it was a lost opportunity right there to yeah. to make the lion the same body type as the scarecrow. But let me say this: one time, I I'm just going to add a little anecdote. One one time, I was in class when I was in school way back when, and I had worked really hard and rendered something. And spent a ton of time, and I just felt like the shadows and the and the and the uh, the values and the colors I used were just amazing. And the teacher kind of came in and gave a critique, like we just gave. I'm like, did you not see the beautiful values and drawing and rendering and everything? And and they were just spending time on concept. And I'm like, all right, so it's it's a sucky idea, but look at how delicious this looks. And what we're trying to say with when we when we hit concept and we might not really speak to all the wonderful rendering is it won't get that far if you're in a portfolio review because the concept's going to stop the, mm -hmm. the the art director or the editor and they're not going to go further. Well, and it and it comes back to a lot of this other stuff is it's got to be that it's got to it's got to have that shape stuff and then that's where this one's fallen down a little bit because look how small the rendering is like if i point out the lion's head and the hair you look at it and it's like oh that's really cool but the first thing we see is that as a silhouette if we were to fill it all in with with a sharpie marker it would look like almost like the same character other than different hairstyles so right. you just gotta gotta remember what what the important things are and uh the rendering comes last in my opinion on that Rendering. Amazing. This is beautiful. Yeah. Really, really beautiful. I love that lion back there. That's solid. Yeah, super so solid. This style, this painting style almost looks like a, a retro 70s airbrush thing that, that they had going on. Like, like uh, you know, the fantasy illustration that, that we had in the late 70s, early 80s. Mm -hmm. With the really soft airbrushy shapes and stuff, it's cool. Yeah, it's got a lot of great, great things going on with it. A comment that I would throw out there for this one, as far as the market goes, if, um, if if you're, excuse me, if you're trying to to uh, really get into the children's book market, the 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 drawing, the volume, all that stuff can work, but the but the uh, the rendering is going to th throw off a lot of uh, uh, art directors and editors. In the in the trade book market, it's going to feel really commercial to them. It's going to feel like it belongs more uh, like in a fantasy Warhammer setting in a game store or something like that. Yeah, which is fine because that's a market there too. Yeah, I mean, there's there's plenty of work there too. Um, so I want to see I like if I had a you know seventy eight Chevy van, I would totally get this printed on the side. <laughs> <laughs> I love how pro it is too with the with the look at the little sign off at the bottom with quiet yeah it's an LLC with all rights reserved there's the website total pro yeah, yeah. I think this looks good um I, my only question is that Dorothy because that's the only one out of the group that does not feel like the character that is in the uh, story yeah but still but it's oh, consistent funny. with the concept you're right. But could you draw Dorothy with? I mean, that Dorothy could still seem like Dorothy within that concept too. I don't think this artist. I mean, she's got the she's got the blue dress thing and the ponytails and the red slippers. Red slippers, that's true. I think she just looks older, to me. It's because she's a, a, a opera woman, one of those big, you know, the fat lady singing. <laughs> it's true. Right? It's yeah, the the graphic design too, the Viking Ozpra, that's really well done with the glint coming off of it. Yeah, nice work, Scott. Someone knows how to render. Yeah, really good. My my biggest critique on this is I love I love the lion, but at the same time I can't tell he's the lion. This this the um it's a little confusing around the face. Yeah, the there's area. some Paul Bonner ness to it. Yeah, careful. <laughs> <laughs>
who I love, awesome. by the way. Right. Let's move on. Okay. Moving on. This one. Simona, mm. um, just really just on the money and, and, and – Just move right on past this one. <laughs> no, let's just embrace it. We should just have a moment of silence for this one. There is there so this is one that I would not change a single mark on it. Yeah, this is in my top three. This is my my top three. I love yeah. it. Rendering's good, design's good, concept's good. It all reads. The graphic design's beautiful. The color's beautiful. Um, just just great work. Do, does this person want to teach a class for us? Yeah. <laughs> the the uh, yeah. look at the bean shape on the hair from Dorothy. You know. Yeah. That you just can't deny those. Those shapes are classic. And this would work for a book. It would work for a game. It would work for an animation. I mean, art directors. And the thing we've been saying, too, tall character, tall and skinny character, short and round character, small character with, you know, elegant shapes to them. It's just, it's working on every level. Every level. And it's pirates. How can you And medium tones on the background so that the white plume on Dorothy pops out. Yeah. And that warm to warm to cool background, and it's what's cool is you start looking at it. The details you actually get sucked in, and the details are actually just as strong as as the overall shapes and the overall lighting and stuff. And as you start looking around, it gets even cooler because there's all these cool little moments um, in there, like the little heart drawn on the Tin Man out of chalk. That's awesome. Yeah, somebody was asking. This is Simona Sicarelli, I believe, is how you pronounce her last name. Sicarelli, yeah. Just and, uh, super solid. She is actually here. So there she is somehow. <laughs> yeah, you Where do you me. live, Simona? Are you are your name sounds Italian? Are you you live here in the States? I wanna know. I don't know why, I'm just curious. This this one Switzerland. Cheryl, wow. Cheryl Pilgrims and um the comic one, the the um for me the comic one with the the um Fungus stuff, I, that's the bar. Yeah. For all you guys wondering, right. like, how good should I try and make this? This is the bar right here. Right here. All right, so what time is it in Switzerland? She's committed. It's got to be like 4 in the morning, 5 in the morning. Yeah, this is so good. 6.30. Oh, my gosh. Oh, well. Wow. Sweet. Awesome. Okay. Right. Thank well, you for should... committing. That was that's just amazing. Yep. Okay, moving on. We got uh, five more. Let's just go ahead and cruise. This one was really fun too, by Tamisha. Um, and and we've had Tamisha in our classes for quite a while, and I see a lot of growth. It's really exciting to see this. Really fun. My my biggest thing on this one is um, the the Dorothy character. I feel like we're looking up her dress. I, I want to see that a little bit lowered. Yeah, that's a little weird. And that's my that's my biggest thing, really. But the thing is, look at the volume. I mean, like we've worked on that before, and you know, she's the the, the nice thing about that is it really is voluminous uh, with the ellipse going around there. You know, mm -hmm. and that's. Do you ever have that problem where you try to decide? Are you going to show the inside the ellipse or below, and you know it would look better one way, but you can't quite make it work. <laughs> Jake doesn't have that problem. He's like, what are you talking about? I do, all the time. <laughs> I talk about that problem in um, the per perspective class and how to how to design a character in perspective. So go towards the end. It's one of the, the ending chapters in the perspective class, and uh, you can learn, learn a lot from that. So one, one thing is the line work on this is really, really great, really beautiful, and, and feels confident. Uh, the faces do seem the same. Somebody commented that the, that the faces look generic because it's the same face kind of plucked on each one of them. So be careful there. They all have the same body type, too. Yeah, good point. So the, the lesson is what you're saying is you, she should vary them more for more, um, for more variety of mm -hmm. body shape. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the pencil work looks great, and like you said, the formula is, is reading really solid. Yep. Tom. Nice job. Okay, and then Thomas. Cool. I love the detail of holding the uh, the, the little tornado. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and the Tin Man looks really solid here. The only one that doesn't feel cohesive in this group to me is is Dorothy. She seems a little stiff for some reason. 
a little plain too. Yeah, compared to the other ones. And I think it could be the gesture that she's just so straight up and down. So like I was saying on some of the other ones, you know, you can once you lift the, the shoulders up, the hips are going to go opposite that. You guys remember what that's called from art history? Contrapposto mm -hmm. pose? Yeah. You remember what the opposite of that is from Egyptian art history where there is no contrapposto? It's called the pose of greater dimensions where everything's completely flat on even planes. Do you guys remember that? All right, Hasha. Uh, I remember uh, Contraposto. <laughs> remember that if I was ever in Italy, I would stand in Contraposto. <laughs> <laughs> Just wrote that I was it's not good. <laughs> anyway, I vary that gesture. That's what all that means. Yeah. I, I want to back you up on the robot design. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, great shapes. Yeah. Okay, this one's kind of fun in that it's it's got that more greeting card feel to it, you know, that real kind of light, uh, understated feel. Yeah, I like the idea of a fairy Oz land. You know, yeah. the, the little munchkins are actually like um, mushroom people, and the witches are these fairies, a dark fairy and a light fairy. And Dorothy, she's shrunk down to their size. She's got to find the wizard to get her back to the right size. Love that. I want to go draw that right now. That sounds so fun. Great concept. Yeah. 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 That's really, really cool. I feel like the, in terms of what, what is submitted here, that it's a first pass and needs to be kind of massaged a little bit. Mm -hmm. But um, in other words, it doesn't feel fin polished like like the ones you're looking at from uh, – from you know some of the other ones, uh, so I'll just take one more stab at the overall art style. But like Jake said, that concept is cool and great. great. Color wise, and color wise, watch the the single colors that only appear once. The blue hair is really grabbing a lot of attention, mm -hmm. um, primarily because it doesn't repeat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that Zen look of, of of the middle dude. I don't know, is he supposed to be the? Uh, I don't know which character that's supposed to be. But I like that pose. It's the wizard, maybe. Oh, that's the wizard? Okay. Um, I guess. That's what I thought, but I wasn't sure. So, yeah, more. I think that could be more deliberate. Yeah. The character on the right feels the most developed to me. Mm -hmm. the, the witch. It's cool. Has kind of an animated. Yeah, these are fun. Too. Yeah. The Bugs Life. Bugs Life. Yeah, really um, fun. That um, lion pose is solid. Kind of looking up? Yeah. I'd lift one of the paws. What do you feel about those front paws being both kind of grounded? Yeah, the one on the right could be like... Kind of lifting up a little bit like cats yeah, do? Yeah, something like that. And a cool, cool idea to have the monkey kind of lifting them up. That's just awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's a super fun, super fun concept. I want to see how Dorothy would look in there. You know? Yeah. Oh, I thought, I didn't see this part. I thought this was Dorothy. I, I would expect oh. it to look similar to this, but like a dress without the yeah. Gearco details. So something like that. Mm -hmm. I'd go farther with this one. That's actually a really cool idea. And I think, I think you're getting some great shapes in there. Yeah. This is, the this is a great, dog. this is a great one to end on. Why do you say that? Is this your last... Is this your last one? Last one. Yeah. She's nine years old. Awesome. What do you say to that? Like say awesome. How do you how do you give any suggestions? I say keep doing her? keep drawing. Going. I wish oh, this is by Elena. The, yeah. I started to, to think about like what I would say and I because I scared all my kids off from <laughs> wanting to be an artist, I just don't critique nine year old work anymore. Well, you could you say, keep, yeah. say, go, 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 go. I mean, they keep going, keep fun. doing it, keep drawing. Yep. Yeah, these are these are great for a nine year old. A lot of fun. And she pre she better be in bed. That's a good point. <laughs> right. I don't know where she lives. Unless she's in Australia. I really like how she does the eyes. She has a little point of contrast. Yeah. Okay, so great job, great job, Elena. 
and great job to everybody. Actually, that was a that was a, a good set. Absolutely, I didn't know what we were going to get because we were doing character design for the first time, and you guys uh, delivered. Um, and so maybe we'll do it again, or like I said, maybe we'll add on to it. You guys ready for the winner? I am. Will you want to give me oh, that? Wait, wait. Let me give you some drum roll going on here. You ready? Let's do it. Simona, she and is rewarded. Uh, there was a couple that were right in that top tier, like Jake was saying. Uh, Could have gone e e you know, any direction with that, um, but this one just seemed like it had it all. The storytelling, oh. the rendering, the design, the gesture, color, every bit of it was on the money. Um, like I said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change a single detail. Uh, so this is the winner. Great job. Even the monkeys, like, colored like a parrot. Yes. Like, cool. Good job. Yep. Then, like Jake said, that's the bar. So you guys should go. I'll, we'll post all these tomorrow. Grab these top ones that we talked about where I said send this to a publisher because you're awesome. And this one obviously is in that group. Uh, grab those and copy them to your desktop. And while you're working, open them up and say, you know, am I, am I hitting that bar? And if not, why not? And uh, see if you can raise your level too. But these are a great, great group. Yep. All right, Will. Okay, so for next month, are we ready for that? Yeah. I'm ready. Let's do it. Are you ready for me to give you the prompt for next month? Now, it's not on our website yet. We were going to try to get that up. It's coming. Do you need anything, Aaron? Aaron's stepping in right now. You wanted to look in here, right? Oh, you're getting the dog. Okay. All right. Sorry, distractions. Um, okay, let me share my screen. And... Let's see. Oh man, I'm slower. You're uh, you're bucking the square shape. <laughs> oh, that's right. What's up with that? Well, it can be tall. It's for the blog. Am I not allowed Fair to do enough. that? I don't like. Fair it. enough. Okay, so I'm gonna read this one. Um. So here you go. Thomas could almost reach it when. Dot dot dot. Okay, so. This month's prompt is designed for you to show tension or action. You can choose to illustrate the moment before blank happens or the moment during blank happening. <coughs> Excuse me. If you choose before, then you should be going for tension, that moment where the viewer isn't sure exactly what's going to happen. If you choose during, then you should be illustrating the moment when blank is happening. Only you can figure out what happens to Thomas or what's about to happen to Thomas. So cool. Is, is Thomas the baby or the rabbit? <laughs> it can be whatever you want. <laughs> I should Since ask. I know you're going to do this assignment, Jake. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> you guys aren't familiar with this, uh, this assignment yet. You may want to take a look at uh, my uh, visual storytelling video because I've got a whole section on just this idea with examples mm. and... Uh, critique of kind of how to go about it and what feel each one of them has before the action or during the action or after the even after the action takes place. Um, so if you haven't seen that, go check it out because it's it's right in line with this this one. Can you say it again? Say the name of that class. It's uh, visual storytelling. And that's in the subscription. Yeah. And uh, and so you go through how to do this assignment. Yep, with examples and and a lot of a lot of detail on this one. Okay, great. Yep. Okay, so that's it. And um, what do you think? Do you guys? And the other thing, we, we're you know we've done this format twice where we go through everybody's. We would love to hear either again either in the chat room. I mean, in the um, on the forums or a personal message to kind of get the vibe. Like, do you wish we were taking fewer illustrations? Like, I think we were doing six. And mm -hmm. doing a full critique on them, or doing this format. So we want to know. Okay. So if you don't tell us, we we don't know what to do, and we we'll probably do the wrong thing. Yeah, we're open to changing. <laughs> we're 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 open to crit as you show you are. So uh, yeah, I mean I'd, we've done it a bunch of different ways, and so we definitely want to hear what you're thinking. You can let us know at SVS Learn Info at gmail.com. Also, I'll, I'll create another um, thread for it in the forum. 
That's okay. a good idea. That's a good okay, idea. Great. Thanks a lot, guys. And we'll see you next month for Third Thursday. Signing off. Bye, guys.